you know, it, it, the scare comes because it is real, you know, and because it can happen to anybody. Um, but it, it reads and, and, and looks and feels uh, much more like you're watching, say, a, a, a true crime a documentary, that sort of thing. She didn't know where she was going until that car pulled up in the driveway. Uh, she literally knew nothing. Not in a way, I mean, it's not like we blindfolded her and threw her in a van. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was very comfortable and well taken care of. Uh, she needed help from somebody uh, to help her get to the next step. Uh, so I, I decided to, uh, you know, turn it in, in, into a film. That's amazing. And so that's how you pulled Kindle in, right? That's exactly, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. A good. Look at you stitching it all together. <laughs> wow. <What happened? laughs> it's got to be super obvious like that, and then I'm good. <laughs> yeah. yes. Everybody good now? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, hello, everybody. Um, we're not live. This is recorded. But with me today, I have, um, you might recognize one of the faces. I'm going to make you wait and go for <laughs> Kendall, is it Wel Welpton? Yeah, that's right. Kendall Welpton. Kendall, and you know Steve Gonzalez? Well, you say your last name because I'm going to butcher it. It's Gonzalez. You can Gonzales. say it you like. I no, there's proper <laughs> ways to say things because my last name always gets messed up. So, <laughs> um, but thank you both for joining us. You um, together are producers on a new uh, documentary called The House in Between, correct? Yeah. yeah. And this is a very exciting, like I, the second I spotted the press release about it I was on it I saw Kendall's name I'm like doo, 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 doo. how do I talk to you about this how do I get a oh, screener <laughs> that's awesome. awesome thank you it's uh it's a little bit different you know in in terms of paranormal documentaries uh you will have your you know scares and, and frights that just come along with the territory of, of such uh you know the, that sort of topic but um it's presented in a, a very factual and, and matter-of-fact way you know, we didn't want to create it or make it or paint it scary. Just let it sort of speak for itself in terms of what is happening. And, you know, it, it the scare comes because it is real, you know, and because it can happen to anybody. Um, but it, it reads and, and, and looks and feels uh, much more like you're watching, say, a a, a true crime a documentary that sort of thing but a paranormal in theme so it, it's a, it's a little bit different than your typical paranormal documentary but uh, we wanted it to be a uh, very unbiased you know and if it's painted dark and scary you're already going to feel you know biased in in, in one direction so uh, we wanted it to just stand alone and, and speak for itself that's yeah. true you did a great job with that do you have anything to add to that, Kendall? Yeah, just, I mean, we, we did go to great lengths to really uh, take that unbiased approach. Um, as Steve was saying, we, we really wanted to, to kind of make a movie for um, people who love the paranormal, you know, and, and we also wanted to make a movie that was honest and kind of saw both sides for the skeptic as well. So, you know, uh, Working on the film, we had skeptics and we had believers and, you know, even our editor was a, a major skeptic um, going into this and, and it was really cool to see his point of view of things because, uh, you know, we didn't want to sway it to one side. 
uh, you know, and, and, and that was, uh, that was a, actually a big, big thing for us making this, this documentary. That shows that you guys accomplished that. Cause I have to say, I'm, uh, I don't, I, I started out as a true believer. You tell me anything, I'll buy it. And the longer I've been in, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm thinking, I can see some tomfoolery, but this, you guys approached it going with the scientists, like major serious scientists, not, oh, just your run of the mill somebody or another. You, you really went good. And like Steve was saying with the, one of them said, I loved what he said about it's, if, if it's not explainable, if it can't be explained with the science, then I go to, it's a detective story. Right. And that's what you guys have totally created with this. Yeah. You know, it, it, getting science involved ended up being uh, quite a challenge, to be honest, in the pre-production uh, part of the documentary, I, I spent, uh, you know, I want to say three or four months, maybe just talking to different physicists, trying to find somebody that would uh, even, you know, talk to us about the paranormal. Uh, they were very political, very, they, they would talk to me on the phone and very kind and nice, but uh, once I, I wanted to get them in, you know, in, in front of a camera, they were, no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, but uh, Dr. Dai, uh, right in Jackson, uh, Mississippi, uh, was super, super nice. And, and his expertise is, is actually in energy transference and, and uh, uh, light, ano you know, anomalous light, that sort of thing. So uh, he was the perfect uh, physicist for it. Uh, doesn't believe in the paranormal. Obviously, you, you can see in the documentary, uh, not in a, you know, he's not looking down on us. It's just no. not a thing, it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that was important to have somebody that didn't, you know, not that I, I didn't want somebody who didn't believe necessarily, but somebody who just didn't have a sway either direction. Uh, and then the other physicist that uh, is featured, uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Denon, um, the homeowner, Alice, had actually read a few of his books uh, and it said, you know, if, if we could get his ear, uh, that would be quite uh, fascinating. And, and one of the reasons she, you know, uh, agreed to do the documentary, it was because she knew she could get some extra eyes on what's happening in the house of people like Dr. Den and, uh, you know, Michael Den and that, that sort of thing. And um, yeah, so having him involved, uh, we, we reached out to him and, and got him involved and uh yeah, we took a, a straight approach to, to scientists. And we, you see, we have weather experts and in, in, in the whole thing. Um, we tried really hard to get a, a, a geologist, to, to be honest with you, uh, but that didn't go quite as planned. I got to talk to a lot of them on the phone, uh, but, but they wanted nothing to do with uh, the study of, of, of the paranormal. Wow. And did you, did any, this could go for either one of you, did either, any of them, scientists involved did you really think wow um that was something like did they present something to you that you'd never heard before that kind of made you think of the paranormal or how you might approach an invest investigation any differently a yeah great question yeah yeah that's a great um you know in the documentary i actually that's a that's a you got to watch the documentary kind of kind of set up but um but yeah i mean steve interviewed dr die and um he he actually told steve some some pretty interesting uh facts about energy that um that you'll you'll see in the doc uh, yeah there, there are some theories that are quite popular you know in the paranormal world both with the investigators and the enthusiasts people who watch the shows people who love the shows the armchair investigators uh, they're tuned into these theories as well they all know you know that the audience is very smart nowadays and uh, i got to the bottom of some of those theories you know through uh, dr Dai and uh, you know professor denon and um it was quite fascinating you know it both dispelled some popular rumors uh, and most certainly uh, uh, reaffirmed some some rumors that I or excuse me not rumors some some theories, uh, you know that I, I was on the fence about. So uh, that was a cool cool thing there. So it definitely changed the way I investigate uh, the paranormal. Uh, uh, the paranormal. Uh, I'm very much so now. You know if uh, if what I'm seeing or hearing, but if what I'm seeing. Uh, you know, disobeys the laws of science and physics. 
uh, and I have a pretty you know good basic understanding of of that. Um, then I'm either misinterpreting what I'm seeing, uh, or it's it's in my head. It's either one of those two things. So if it disobey, excuse me, if it disobeys the laws of science, uh, then I'm either misinterpreting that experience, uh, or it, it's in my head. And that doesn't mean psychically. You know, there's telephonic and and, and audiophonic sounds that can be in uh, my head, not in a psychic way, in very much a science way. You know. So I I also want to add too is. Um, I mean, this is the first time that I know about, maybe, maybe Steve, you've seen it before, but I, I've never seen science chime into the paranormal like this. I mean, just from us as producers jumping in and trying to get these guys on board, that was like, uh, you know, a feat in itself, getting them and, uh, you know, having them a part of the doc was, was really, was really tough. And I don't think, you know, we kind of went in doing this, we wanted to do something different and uh and and we're so lucky to have those guys involved absolutely there are a few you know a few physicists and a few that are uh, a little more open to it but <clears throat> it's not like this it's usually uh, you know you have a, a, a and i'll say the word fan i don't like that word but you know a fan of the show or a fan of what we do and they happen to be a physicist or happen to be a scientist and they'll talk to you that way but uh, if you just reach out, call a, a university, reach out to a, a research group and tell them you're a paranormal investigator and you want, uh, they're just not going to talk to you. You know, you, you have to, uh, and it's sad, but you have to have some sort of prominence uh, in the field uh, to, to get that sort of reach. Uh, uh, but they're, they're starting to come around, you know, the scientists. And uh, you'll see through the documentary, they're, they're starting to, uh, figure out ways that they can study this and, and look at it as, as something viable. I love it. And you, you definitely have the prominence and you definitely got fresh faces and the, the yeah. people are amazing. I mean, whether they're scientists, the historians you're talking to, the people around the town, Alice herself, the other investors, these, this is a great, it's so refreshing to see this angle you guys went from. And for such a long time, right? Because this is how many years the house has been? Ten years, ten. Yeah, ten years. Uh, Lots and, of. You know, it's not all science. You know, I don't want to uh, no. you know, make it seem like it's it's all, you know, science. You know, the, the science, although is very much a part, is a, is a very small fraction. Uh, it's very much, you know, paranormal investigating experiences. Uh, and, and even the, the human stigma you know the, the the humility side of it how does uh, somebody who's dealing with a haunting uh, how does that affect their daily life what do they go through what does the town think about them what do their neighbors think you know i'll be completely honest uh, and kendall can can just speak on this uh, and i don't know if we've told anybody this yet to not you know friends and stuff but uh, Kendall uh, was doing his uh, drone shots, and the, the drone landed in in the neighbor's yard, you know, <laughs> just across the street. Yeah, yeah. And Kendall went to retrieve it, 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 you know, not in the, you know, it's just he, you know, and she came running out of the house and was like, "I don't want that stuff over here." Like, I want you know, none of that coming over here. None of that coming over here. Don't bring that over here. That's <laughs> right. She's talking about the, you know, what's going on at house. She yeah. didn't want it over there. <laughs> she did not want. She did yeah. not want us stepping foot yeah. on her property. We tried to. We tried to put her on camera for that too. She would not have it. She just. <laughs> I mean, no. the people. I mean, you know, we went. We went to every length to to get the story there, and I feel like, you know, we we took a long time to to make sure it was accurate, and and you know, we spoke to a lot of people about about this story and it was it was neat to step into these people's lives i mean we really wanted to show the perspective of a paranormal investigators that are trying to help this woman alice and alice's story along with you know everything else in the activity going on and it's it's just a different angle that um that that i think some people um have have done so so it, it, it was a fun and it was challenging. You know, we, we kind of took the approach as, uh, as, as, as detectives um, and, and, you know, we'd follow a lead and some leads kind of panned out and some leads, uh, some, some leads were dead. So, you know, it was, it was time consuming and, 
And it, it, I think the, the doc is extra special because of that, because, you know, it's just a little different angle. It, we kind of took a linear um, narrative approach. So basically, you know, start to finish, we just kind of told the story as it happened. So that's what you see in the doc. It, it's like a dateline, like a paranormal dateline almost. It's so good. It's like the true crime and the paranormal world. We even have, like, I, I found it very interesting because you, you did say, Steve, that it's not just all science. You even bring in a psychic, which you, you admit, I don't normally do this, but you did it in a way that a lot of people often uh, question, why don't they do it that way? And you did. So you did a lot of that through... I mean, it's a very fresh new approach that you Thank tackled. You. Yeah, with the, with the, the psychic, you know, that experience was uh, very, very fascinating, you know, and, and you're right, I don't often work with in, in terms of in, investigating. Uh, if our client, you know, really uh, wants that side of things, we'll work with a psychic, you know, for the client. And that's what pushed it here. She was very much like, you know, I want to speak to, to someone. And I said, okay, if we're going to involve uh, a psychic um they can't know it you know they, they just can't and um i know for a fact that she and you'll see it in the documentary but um i know for a fact because i was a part of it i was you know one of the people who did it to, she didn't know anything we we flew her into a, a different state we you know she was kept completely she didn't know where she was going until that car pulled up in the driveway uh, she literally knew nothing. Not in a way, I mean, it's not like we blindfolded her and threw her in a van. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was very comfortable and well taken care of. And, yeah. you know, it was very comfortable. <laughs> she was, you know, very well taken care of. She wasn't blindfolded. It was just, you know, but we didn't give her any information uh, leading up to it. When she opened the door and, and met Alice, uh, that was 100% the very first time she ever met Alice, knew, uh, even knew of Alice. It's the first time she even knew what city she was going to. Yeah. So oh, wow. I was a part of that. I knew that, uh, you know, that, that and, and uh, if I was going to work, you know, a psychic into the documentary, I knew it had to be that way. And, and that's also one of the reasons I didn't call upon, uh, you know, a psychic that, that I know. You know, I have uh, plenty of friends that are very, very close, uh, who I love dearly, who are very talented psychics. But if I know them, there's a bias there now. Mm -hmm. You know, if I call and say, hey, I, you know, now uh, there's a bit of a, in the audience perspective, a, a bit of it. So I, I didn't want to use, you know, anybody I know personally. Uh, I never met, the, the, you know, Jill, who's the, the psychic in the documentary. I never met her before. Kendall presented her uh, to me, and, and she's fantastic and a very, very sweet lady. Wow. So did you find her, Kendall? Yeah. Um, I, uh, my wife, Farah and I did. We used to um, have a podcast a long time ago, and uh, we met her. She was one of our guests on the podcast, and we kind of stayed in touch through the years. Uh, she always struck me as a very credible uh, psychic because um, here's why. Because she doesn't charge for her services and she never uh sorry she she works with the law enforcement uh -huh. and uh and, and she she's actually cracked a few cold cases which was so so you know uh that those those two together said you know let's let's uh present her to steve maybe steve would uh give the, the go ahead that was a tough sell you know i remember i remember steve steve was definitely not wanting to to do a psychic because you know it's it's uh, it's something that you know it's, it's kind of hard to do in the paranormal and do it right. But you know, Jill was the perfect fit, and and it just worked out great. You know, it just worked out great. So oh, she was good. She was that will be. There's a lot. I mean, there's so much in this that when people watch, they will be like, oh. I mean, you, you're gonna have to rewatch. You can't absorb it all the mm. first go. I mean, you really have done. A great job but i know this question is going to come up from people will we see this house on ghost nation oh, uh, that's a great question um and if i answer that question it could give away our, our ending so oh <laughs> so <don't>. no <laughs> okay <laughs> and also I um, have but a i question. tell you oh. what um, <laughs> if i had never been there before and uh you know it would be all, but uh, I don't think uh, 
Alice wants that. I don't think she ever wanted that. I, I, I don't think that uh, if a paranormal television show, because she never reached out in that capacity oh, yeah. uh, ever. She just wanted uh, help she, with her problem. I, yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't think, I don't know if she would have welcomed a TV show, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe at this point, uh, you know, when I met her two or three years ago, um, I don't think she she would have uh, too much hubbub, too much around it. She just wants uh, answers and, and you know, uh, through a, a real documentary where she knew that we could reach real scientists, real help and get, because she honestly doesn't really, she thinks it's paranormal 100%, but if she's proved wrong, she doesn't care either way. Yeah. She just wants to know what it what? is that she can feel comfortable and, and, and move in. So, um, you know, I don't know if having a TV show in would have helped that uh, particular, it, you know, to be honest, Ghost Nation, we, we go through to resolution. So that would have helped her, to be honest with you. But um, I don't know that she would have wanted that. Uh, I think I think this process, um, because she reached out through, you know, um, obviously uh, you can't really reach me directly um, just because it, it's just a strange situation. I end up with, you know, just people who are just concerned about the TV world, that sort of thing. So uh, she had reached out through, a, a booking agent I had at the time and just said, here's what's happening at the house. You know, and I really need answers. Can Steve come, you know? And um, she did that for maybe a, about a year, you know, uh, or maybe not, I, I could be making that up, but it was quite a length of time. Um, I don't want to say the exact, but it was quite a length of time. And just, uh, you know, the fact that it had been 10 years, you know, and the house had been studied continuously by a paranormal team for 10 years you know she just opened her house up to them it's very well taken care of she just doesn't live in there you know she lives somewhere else but you know she gives them the keys go investigate all 10 years they've collected data and investigated this place uh the fact that you know uh, that she really did build this home uh, you know for a place for you know to to grow a fan you know to have her her duck you know and to be her dream you know, home her okay. dream home yeah right and then this happens yeah. you know that the fact that they were uh looking at it like a way to communicate or teach what is in the house to communicate with them and they had been realizing uh, some degree of success uh was also quite fascinating. So all of those things, and then, uh, you know, let me decide, all right, let, let me get on the phone with them and, and chat with them. And, and I did, uh, fell in love with, with Alice and, and John and, and Brad and, and uh, just what was happening there. So I, I did decide to go. I went to Mississippi uh, two separate times without cameras, with no crew, nothing like that. Investigated it twice. And, uh, you know, whether I thought it was haunted or not, uh, which, uh, to be honest, uh, I did have some experiences there, but uh, whether I thought it was or not, I just knew that uh, she needed help from somebody uh, to help her get to the next step. Uh, so I, I decided to, uh, you know, turn it in, in, into a film. That's amazing. And so that's how you pulled Kindle in, right? That's exactly, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. A, a good. Look at you stitching it all together. <laughs> wow. It happened. <laughs> it's got to be super obvious <laughs> like that, and then I'm good. <laughs> wow. Yes, that's when I, I said, you know what, I, I need, uh, you know, somebody with, with that prowess, and, and Kendall was the first guy that, that popped in my head. And yeah. you guys had worked together before, right? Yeah, we have. We um we worked to uh, we worked on ghost hunters we met on ghost hunters and man we worked to closely together for mm -hmm. years and years and years uh I, I was a i was a cameraman uh on ghost hunters and then uh i moved up to director of photography but i ended up following steven tango for many many years and it was awesome <laughs> so we you know we formed a bond over working on the show and and we stayed in touch over the years after the show you know uh went off the air um, and yeah, we just, uh, he gave me a call out of the blue and, and, uh, I had just started up my production company with my wife, Vera and, and we said, yeah, let's do this. And, and we just partnered up and hit the ground running and, and started, started the documentary right away. It was, it was really neat. That's, did you have any experiences then? 
did I have any experiences mm. before that? Or no, in Alice's house. At Alice's house. Uh, yeah, you know, um, the the house is very, very active. I stayed overnight there um, when when I went back out to go film some more uh, more of the dock and stuff. And um, you know, there's. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Will we see you? Do you see you in the documentary? <laughs> Do you become part of your subject? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll, <laughs> we'll you guys should check it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One time at like five in the morning, maybe four in the morning, it was just me and Kendall in the house because you know, we would wrap the, I mean, we, we call them cast just because we were making the, but we, you know, we wrap the, the investigators and, and, you know, it's just one in the morning, you know, we can't, or two in the morning, whatever it is, I don't remember. But Kendall and I, you know, we only had a, a few weeks, you know, it's not like we were there for months and months filming. Uh, so we stayed till, you know, five or six in the morning to do what is known as uh, beauty shots, you'd say, B-roll, that sort of thing. You're just getting different things, you know, uh, we're getting a little technical there, but um, I remember one time, Kendall, you, you may remember this. I, I was actually cooking breakfast. I was making eggs and, and bacon and yeah. sausage for me and Kendall. Yeah. Um, and wow. Yes, uh, Alice the Homer would leave it all out for us because she knows oh. what, what we like. So she would, when she would leave the house over to us, she was like, there's the bake. There's that the was egg. amazing. She was always leave it all out. Some stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would make sure I washed the dishes, you know, but um, we would make it. But I remember Kendall coming out and being like, did you just come and like ask me a question? I was like, no, I'm here with the eggs. What do you mean? Because uh, I was literally cooking them and you have to tend to scrambled eggs. You can't just let them go. <laughs> they get spongy, you know? So uh, I didn't leave the eggs and he was like, Hey man, you just came and like asked me a question. I was like, no, no, no. Um, but the one thing I didn't jump to that being experience at the time is because my laptop was in the other room because uh, I was taking family photos and just making copies of them in case we needed to put one in the dock or whatever. Um, so I thought maybe it, it chimed up or did something, but it's never done that before or since. So I don't know, but um that was one thing that could be perhaps an experience. Oh, whoa. This is, I mean, it's very intriguing. It's a brilliant, and it's really kind of long. It's actually sort of surprising nobody has done this, what you guys have now done. You just raised the benchmark, put it oh, that way. Thank you. So we, 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 we honestly just wanted to make a film that we want to watch, you know, that, that somebody that's into the paranormal would be excited about. And, you know, we, all, Steve and I have talked about ideas for, for, you know, a while and, and we bounce ideas and it was just so awesome to be able to have that creative outlet outside of where we usually are uh, working in TV. I mean, this documentary gave us just amazing possibilities to to try things and it was it was really neat to to be able to do that that was very freeing for us well and it was refreshing to see this approach so you guys great i mean i'm not just saying that if i didn't like it i'd be like eh. yeah. but it was not just eh, by any stretch so prepare because you're gonna you like i said the benchmark raised on a lot of levels <laughs> You're very, very sweet, uh, very sweet. Going in, you know, we uh, we knew we wanted to make something a bit different, you know, not necessarily, I mean, I, I you know, I, not necessarily, you know, we weren't setting out to be like, we want to make the number, you know, just something different that we'd like, like Kendall said. And uh, we also wanted to just make sure that it was very uh, cinematic, you know. It uh, is, wow. But, uh, you know, par paranormal documentaries, they're a lot of fun. Some are very educational. Some are, you know, very, uh, you know, but a lot of times it just gets a little, uh, you know, dark, dingy, hard to see, you know, like, uh, can you know, almost like, like they're, yeah. And IR, so we, black and white. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. Know, very the, gritty and grainy, that sort yeah. of thing. And we did all film cameras and, and uh, cinema lenses and, you know, Kendall put all that together to, to, 
you know, make it look and feel like a movie, um, but real life paranormal. So it, it's like you're watching a movie, but it's real paranormal investigation right there in, in front of you. But when you watch it, you know, it, looks and feels like you're watching a movie it brings it brings you in like a movie that's yeah that was that was a challenge and it it, it ended up paying off for us it's really neat to see that because you don't when you're doing it, it you're just kind of like oh hopefully this works you know and especially when it's different when when you know for me anyway shooting ir all the time in the dark that was like way different for us because you know we we use film cameras in color and you know we shot it cinematically and uh and so that was that was uh that was definitely a challenge especially the camera being so big i, I think you probably saw that yes <laughs> wow <around there. laughs> yeah not tiny <laughs> well gosh you guys thank you so much i i thank kept you. you a little longer than i had promised you just short so nope. i just want to thank you for doing this and for the chance to watch you know screen the film ahead of time and Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate you wanting to chat with us. Uh, this was quite fun. You're a very, very nice lady. Thank you. So Thank much. you. I Thank appreciate you. that. Uh, right back at, well, not nice lady. You're both nice gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Yeah, you too. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.